Father, grace to you and peace and salvation in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, Christmas is a time when we uh, are especially thinking on children. It seems to be sort of children-oriented, don't you think? I mean, you have all the songs, you have the uh, Christmas uh, TV specials, uh, cookies and gingerbread and toys and all that kind of fun stuff. And so it seems to be very children-oriented in a lot of ways. And uh, I have a question for you today based on that. Do you receive the kingdom of God like a little child? I mean, how do children receive their gifts? Christmas time, right? With excitement. Yeah, well, how are we... Don't preach my whole sermon, okay? <laughs> She's always right on, you know? <laughs> but we're going to talk today about being a child because... You know, Christmas, we think on children a lot, but God wants us to think a lot on children, too. Did you know that? Let's listen to a very important word that God has for us in Mark chapter 10. We read this, that they were bringing children to him, to Jesus, that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. So, I want to ask you, do you receive the kingdom of God like a little child? This is very, very important. Now, in some ways, we're supposed to be adults in the faith, aren't we? Mature? I mean, that also is in Scripture. You have, for example, in... Uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, Brethren, don't be children in your thinking. Be babes and evil, but in thinking be mature. And then like in Ephesians 4, which we read, uh, God's given you pastors, so that you may no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the cunning of men, by their craftiness in deceitful wiles. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up, Right? Be mature adults. Be grow up in every way into Christ, the head from whom the whole body grows and build itself in love. So, in some ways, God wants you to be a mature adult, and in some ways, a little child. And actually, in this verse here from uh, Mark chapter 10, the word for little child is paideon, which means little child. It can mean infants, actually. Very, very young. God wants you to be like them. And to add emphasis to it, Jesus says, unless you become and receive the kingdom of God like a paideon, like a little child, you will not enter it. Now that word in the Greek, by the way, is a double negative, which means you will in no wise ever, you haven't got a chance of entering the kingdom, unless you receive it like a child. So since it's Christmas time, we're thinking about kids and how they receive Christmas, Let's use that as an insight into how we are to receive God's kingdom, like little children. What's God tell us about that? Well, first of all, thank you, Corrine. <laughs> how do children receive Christmas and Christmas gifts? Excitement. Excitement. They are expecting great things from their father. Many gifts and wonders, right? Isn't this how children receive uh, Christmas gifts? Think about it. When you were first, when you were a little kid, what was it like? You'd go to sleep and you'd be hardly able to get to sleep. Your eyes would be bugging out. You'd be thinking, right, on all the things you're going to get the next day. And it was like visions of sugar plums dancing in your head, right? As the song goes. When it comes to Christmas morning, how early did you get up as a child? It was like seven? No, that's too late. Six? Five? You want to wake your children? You want to go to bed? You know, get up with your family at 4.30. And then let's contrast that with you now. Old funny decks, right? I mean, the older you get, well, you answer this question as to whether you're funny duddy. You think, well, six is a little early to celebrate. Why not seven? Or maybe eight. Let's sleep in. Or maybe at nine o'clock. Right, exactly. In fact, I've heard it said, even from people in this congregation, maybe even from my own lips at times, where the husband says to his wife, What would you like for Christmas this year? Ah, nothing. And, uh, you know, wife says to her husband, what do you want? Nothing. All right, let's just make a pact and have an agreement not to get each other anything. And then, well, neither of us feel guilty. 
Have you ever gotten to this stage? Yeah. All right. You're old. That's the problem. You see? This is decrepit. This is, this is just lame. Okay? This is joyless. This is old. That's not, I mean, maybe you get that way with Christmas gifts as you get older. But don't ever get that way with God's gifts to you in Christ. All right? Because the saints are always excited and looking for the kingdom. That's seen in Scripture. For example, we turn over here to Luke chapter 2. Remember, Jesus, just after Jesus was born, and uh, they bring him to the temple, and they meet a guy named Simeon. And it says here in uh, verse 25, There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This name was, man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. What was he doing? He was looking for it. He was excited. He was anticipating great things from the Father to come, according to his word. And then a few lines later, we meet another older person, but who was still young, Anna. And she was a prophetess, and she was quite old, but she, coming up that very hour, she gave thanks to God and spoke of Jesus to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. So the saints, you, as children are always to be looking with great anticipation to the great and wondrous gifts that your Father gives to you. That's the way we ought to look towards the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. And remember what Jesus says, you know, if, you're, if a son asks a father, a father, for, a, for um, if he asks for him for bread, the father won't give him a stone. If he asks for a fish, he won't give him, you know, a poisonous snake. You're evil. If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Heavenly Father will give good things to those who ask Him. So ask and it will be given you, says Jesus. That's how you're going to receive the kingdom. Not as an old fuddy-duddy, but as a, as a child, excited to receive great things and expecting great things from your Father. And as David said, Psalm 20, May He grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory, and in the name of our God, set up our banner, banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. You know what God says in Psalm 81? He says, I'm the Lord your God. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Isn't that fantastic? That we have such a God as this? Well, secondly, we want to receive the kingdom in another way as well, like a child. And we'll get a clue of that. Jesus will explain it here in Matthew chapter 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, Jesus put him in the midst of them and said, Surely I say to you, unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So what are we supposed to be like as children in that case? Humble, Humble right? Lowly. How do children receive their presents from their father? Do they uh, try to pay for them? Right? They receive them as only a child can receive them. As a gift of his grace. And they don't seek to pay back. When I was young, uh, I got some presents and my parents just sold their house in Cape Cod. They sent down some of my old toys I had. How about this one? You might have guessed. Who's this? Good, good guess. This is a Lone Ranger. All right? You know what this thing would be worth today, right? And Tonto, along with. Did I get these gifts from my parents on that wonderful Christmas morning and say, Oh, great, how much do I owe you? Can I pay you in monthly installments? <laughs> no, I immediately received them as only a child can receive them. As a gift, something I can't pay for, but something that my father gave me in grace because he loves me. And Jesus says that's how you must, actually, must receive the kingdom of God. And this is why the Jews, many of them in Jesus' day, or Paul's day, did not get saved. Because they wanted to pay for it with their own righteousness. Buy God's gifts and not receive them as a gift. We read that actually in Romans chapter 10. Where Paul, speaking of the Jews, says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them, that is the Jews, is that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but it's not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that, that comes from God. Notice that's the gift, right? Righteousness from God. And seeking to establish their own righteousness. They did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law. That everyone who has faith 
may be justified. How does a child receive a gift? He doesn't seek to pay back. Adults, your adults are always like this, right? You invite me over to dinner, I feel I need to invite you over to dinner. Or, you know, you give me something, I feel I have to give you something. Even it up. Children, it's not like that. They just receive it and they say, hopefully, thank you. But they receive it as only a child can, as a gift. And God says, unless you receive the child, the, the kingdom of heaven, like a little child, in humility, as a gift of grace, you will by no means enter it. It's the only way. For it's written, for by grace have you been saved through faith. And this isn't your own doing. It's the gift of God. Not because of works, lest any man should boast. So say the words free gift. Free gift. Is that how you receive the kingdom of God? That's what the scripture says we must do. For we read that in Romans 6, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Romans 5 says, if because of Adam's trespass, death reigned through that one man Adam, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man Jesus Christ. So righteousness, heaven, the kingdom, free gift must be received by faith in that way, as a gift of grace. And that wicked scientist, pseudoscientist, I talked about on Christmas Eve and Christmas, Richard Dawkins, you've heard of him? Mm -hmm. The God delusion, he rails against God, hates God, he wrote this. There is something infantile in the presumption that someone else has a responsibility to give your life meaning and point. The truly adult view, by contrast, is that our life is as meaningful, as full, and as wonderful as we choose to make it. And I want to tell you something. If you go as he goes, you know, heaven will be barged to this man unless he repents. In his adult way of thinking, and he calls it infantile to lean on God. Children must receive all things as a gift of grace. And that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful news. And the children receive it so. Jesus says, unless you receive the kingdom of, God, of heaven like a little child, you will by no means enter it. So turn and become like them. Receive it as a gift. Do you? Yes. Amen. That's Amen. glorious. And then we also, when God gives us great gifts, what do children do? They receive them quickly by faith. They unwrap them, right? In our house, actually, growing up, uh, you know, uh, we got up really early, or my siblings and I, and we'd be waiting right on the stairs. I remember the red carpet going upstairs and then down to the living room where the presents were. And we'd all be waiting on the last step. And we'd be just, it's like a starting gun of the race, right? And Dad, as soon as he took the picture and said, go, we ran. And we went and opened them up right away. What do adults do? After breakfast or something, right? I mean, you're boring. You are boring people if we do this, okay? At least with respect to Christmas. God says when it comes to Christmas and when it comes to my gifts, run to them. Open them quickly by faith and lay hold of them and don't let anyone snatch them out of your hand. And children, it's no wonder Jesus says to such belongs the kingdom, right? Because they believe quickly. I mean, I've, I've preached, I'll tell you, for years sometimes to adults and it's like beating against an iron barred door and it's like forever to bring them to faith. But children... Remember that uh, little, uh, that Scottish Highland Games Children's Festival we had? We had three children come to church after that. Little children. And I was driving them home one day, just a block or two away. And I said, are you guys, are you guys Christians? And they said, no, we're, um, we're uh, uh, Episcopalians. <laughs> and they said, what's an Episcopalian? <laughs> and I said, well, that's a Christian. If you believe, you know that there's a God who created the heavens and the earth. Do you believe that? Yes. I said, do you know that Jesus died for you? They said, no, we never heard of that. I said, well, all of our sins lead to death. And Jesus died for us. And God sent his son so that we can live forever. He died to take away our sins. Do you believe that? Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, easy, right? And then I say, do you believe that Jesus rose again from the dead, the resurrection? They say, no, we never heard about a resurrection. What's that? I said, well, Jesus was God and God's son, so when he died, death couldn't hold him. And on the third day, he got up, and the angel said, behold, he's not here. He's risen. 
Do you believe that he's raised from the dead? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, do you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, we do. All in the space of like three minutes, okay? Children, no wonder Jesus says, to such belongs the kingdom. They're so willing and ready to believe, to lay hold of, to open the presents quickly, and to grab them and start playing with them. And God wants us to lay hold on Jesus Christ. And don't be some old, again, buddy naughty adult, because that could kill you. That could bar you from heaven. It said in the scriptures, uh, do not say, uh, or some say, today or tomorrow we'll do such and such. Whereas you don't know about tomorrow, says God. What's your life? You're just a mist. You appear for a little while and then vanish. It could be that there is, is no tomorrow for you. Rather, today is the day of salvation, says the Lord. Lay hold on it on my kingdom like children. When it's presented to you, open it quickly, believe it, and lay hold of it, and don't let Satan come and rob you of your gifts that I present to you. Amen? Amen. So lay hold of them like children, but then also give them away like children. Share like children. I mean, if I'm a father and I give to my son, for example, the Lone Ranger, and I had another son and he refused to share with his, friend, with his brother, how that would injure my heart, right? Make me sad. God says, I've given to you freely. You now go and freely give the kingdom. That's being a child, right? Make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey. Give the gifts to other people. And then one more here is that uh, in our home, at least, when we got all these wonderful gifts all under the tree, right? God, our dad, always had one extra one sort of hidden a little further on. Kind of that was a little out of sight, but it was usually the best of all, like some big bright, bright red bike or something like that. Did you ever, I don't know about your traditions. So it was with me. But that is the way it is with God. He has greater gifts than the ones we've already received. Do you believe that? Are you going to be excited? Yes. And look forward to such things? You know, I remember my niece Kelly, who was when she was just five years old, uh, and we were celebrating Christmas with her, and she opened up, up about half of her gifts, and she just, she just like melted away into a puddle of goo. She was so overcome by all these gifts. She was like, oh, oh, oh. and she was just crying, and it took like 15 minutes to get back the present opening because she couldn't take it. It was too much. God has already given to you, friends. In Christ, forgiveness of sins, reconciliation, friendship, peace, the Holy Spirit, eternal life, the kingdom of God. And guess what? He's not done. He's got more gifts waiting to be opened behind the tree, hidden just a little bit further back for you to open. And you've got to be excited about this. Listen to what your dad in heaven has in store for you. 1 John 3, beloved, we're God's children now. It doesn't yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He appears, Jesus, when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. You are going to be changed. Your eyes are going to be like flames of fire. You're going to be like the sun in full strength in the kingdom of your Father. Oh, you have better things to come. And it says here in Romans 8, If God did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, will He not also give us all things with Him? I mean, right now you have a house and home. God said, I'm going to give you the universe. I'm going to give you the world. Everything I have. Look forward to it. It says in Romans 8, If we're children, then we're heirs. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided that we suffer with Him, in order that we may also be glorified with Him. And Jesus said in Re Revelation 3, He who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. As I myself conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Has God got great things for you behind the tree? He sure does. There shall no more be anything accursed, says the Lord on that day. But the throne of God is going to be, and of the Lamb shall be in the midst of it. His servants will worship him. We don't need any, need any more Lamb of light or of sun. For the Lord God will be their light. And they shall reign forever and ever. This is what God's got in store for you. So, are you going to be old, decrepit, boring, and frankly, bar yourself from heaven? You know, as Christians, the older we get in our earthly lives, the younger we're supposed to get in our spiritual lives. Though our outer nature is wasting away, <laughs> you feel that, right? 
Your inner nature is being renewed every day because we're looking not to things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Everything you see that's seen is going to pass away. But the unseen things, those are unfading in glory and eternal. You've got greater gifts behind the tree, says God. So if visions of sugar plums dance in the heads of kids, visions of our heavenly country should dance in our heads as the children of the living God. And finally, just know that all of these gifts, they come to us in our older brother, as Jesus Christ. All the promises of God find their yes in Him. And God's put all of His presence for His children under the tree. That is, the tree of His cross. But far be from me to glory, says Paul, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. And we're looking for that day when our Older brother, our Savior, Jesus Christ, will say, as God's representative, as God's Son, Come, O blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.